，然后张昌龄这个时候他就勃然大怒，他就就就就当时就是就是喊出来就是。Uh, so, that really, uh, so Zhang Zhang Yi flew into rage, and then when he realized that the Pope really, he thought the Pope really thought about what the progress in China, so he said that the Pope is a fake Pope. And then the citizen embraced him, realizing he was brainwashed, and then later on, he ran to meet him between the priests, uh, he had a private audience with uh, the Pope. For John Paul II. Pope, yeah, Pope II. Then he said, you can still say, 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 so they tried to keep him in the Vatican, saying, uh, but he said that my mission is in China. So he returned to China. When he went back, it happened that uh, 400 bishops and uh, uh, other uh, religious officials, they held uh, the first conference in Shanghai. During the conference, they made the proposal to, uh, uh, they made various proposals to, they are the patriotic churches. So Zhang Gangyi uh, proposed that they should pledge so allegiance to the Vatican. They rejected his proposal first and set aside, and they did not. They did not want to discuss it. So, uh, in protest, he raised his hands throughout the whole time and wanted them to resume discussion of his proposal. And then at the end of the conference, he came out of the, the, the conference center, and then at the stone steps, he passed out. You know, I want you to say one more word about this deal between the Vatican and the regime. Um, do you think it's going to backfire? I, mean, I want to know if he thinks that uh, the, ch the Catholic Church in China could lose people because of this deal. I mean, what, what struck me, you know, in, in, in the book, I mean, I'd like you maybe also to talk about religion in China, because in January, the regime implemented a whole series of new laws to repress religion, and they're fear, they're fear religion. And you said, you wrote in the book that uh, after Mao died, that religion, Christianity, returned with a vengeance. I mean, how important... I mean, is, is the house church movement and religion in China, you know, and, and is it because people have lived through communism and now this materialism, everybody's hungering for the dollar, people want more than, than is given to them by the regime? Could you comment on this? Uh,关注了是那个城市的一个家庭教会。其实那个中国的天主教和中国的基督教对于中国呃，在乡村生活特别的重要。因为乡村生活最开始那些传教士就是他们就选择是非常偏远、非常贫穷的那么一些乡村
important part in rural life. And uh, in early Christi uh, the Christian missionaries, they target very remote uh, areas in China, and then they went there to uh, uh, evangelize, and then they converted a lot of uh, rural Chinese people into Christians. And in some of the villages that I visited, their villages still have no electricity. 对，这就是在一百五十多年前，这些呃，可能是他们的曾祖父的那一代，然后这些传教士当时很年轻，二十多岁、三十多岁，然后语言也不通，然后就到那个地方就开始传播这个福音，最后死了，然后就是埋在那
anything to uh, they didn't have any other form form of entertainment but they meet once a month for Christian fellowship and then uh, I remember that I went to attend one of the fellowship meetings there were so many flies and when people talk the flies were all over the place all over your face and people just the calmly swap the, the flies to death and then keep the conversation and then at the end of the at beginning of the fellowship they prepare this uh, this feast and then you have to fight off the flies and then but after the meal was over they start to sing hymns and the hymns sounded so beautiful it was so un uh, surreal in that environment and then after the hymns were over the flies started coming and start to sing again it's like a, a, a duet of course the hymn and then the the, the sing of the, the flies it was quite a, a, an experience and ruth was part of that ruth was part of the one of the, a woman who was uh, Converted during the, um, she participated in the in the in the fellowship, and she. And can you say a word about the cancer patient? Uh, so the, the 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 book tells the story about the cancer patient who grew up in Shanxi province. They were so poor, there was no, no water in the village. But then she, uh, well, he, the person, he and his wife, they moved to, to Guizhou and then uh, started the, the sewing business. He was a tailor. And then he found out that he had uh, cancer, last minute, last days to live. And he was converted into Christianity. And then this is a book about, uh, he interviewed him about how the underground churches changed his life. And he survived. Yeah, he's. he's he, at the end of the book, he, di he died, but he managed during the last, uh, lived a very, he said, very meaningful life during the last few, uh, few years. I'm sorry for focusing so much on religion, but this book, he called me a week before his, um, uh, his death and then told it. Okay. 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 It is he was very grateful that before his death, all the other Christians showed a lot of care and love, especially from the church that uh, he knew from Sutra. I would just one more question on religion, because I, mean, I really urge everyone to read God is Red. I mean, everybody knows about Corpse Walker, but God is Red is an extraordinary, extraordinary book. I found it deeply moving. And there was one, I want to ask about your own personal attitude uh, toward religion. I mean, you said that you were so deeply touched when this child uh, touched the body of Wang Jimin um, after he was uh, executed. Uh, and then, you know, you went and interviewed the son and you talked about all the trouble you had. You, you lost the first interview, or at least half of the first interview. Uh, when you were going for a second interview to interview the son, you lost your bag with your flute and your tape recorder, and then there was a terrible traffic jam. And, and you, said that the, you said that the whole world seemed to have risen up against me. Uh, and then you said, uh, as you were walking to the house where Wang Jishan, the son, uh, was living. As the sun was disappearing behind the mountains, you said that two rainbows suddenly emerged in the sky, forming a colorful cross. You're not a believer, but did you almost become a believer then? Ndosu when I do stories like that, I try to avoid my own opinions because if you fight for somebody's causes, it's very strong. It's very important you are very opinionated. You have to have your own strong views on something. But when you tell other people's stories, try to be not be judgmental. So I try to avoid having such uh, any opinions. 
对，如果说呃，如果说观点的话，我从这种角度的话，我远远远远不如那个李安友教授那么优秀。他就是他的那个观点，然后他的文章都都给我很多的那个启发。但是我这个我我在记录这些的时候，就是我以后我有些时候看不出我的观点在。When it comes to opinions, and uh, uh, Professor Nathan has done a much better job explaining <laughs> than myself. But I, many of his views and opinions have influenced me greatly. But when I'm writing these stories, I don't feel like I want to project my own opinions in the pieces. Okay, I understand. But let me let me uh, <laughs> ch change the subject. And, and uh, some of the stories, by the way. Tell real horrors, real horrors, uh, and there's one um, which is called the retired official, uh, which describes just unspeakable horrors that took place during uh, the enormous famine uh, that accompanied the great, so-called Great Leap Forward, and 30 million people died. 30 million people died, and this official, um, you know, saw terrible things, including cannibalism. Um, and you have today a regime in China that calls any discussion of that historical nihilism, including, you know, uh, the Cultural Revolution, which has been called the spiritual holocaust, when the country descended into chaos, more than a million people were killed, a kind of ideological madness, and of course, the Tiananmen Massacre. Uh, and could you, I mean, are the people of China aware of these horrors and uh, what can be done to uh, tell them the truth when the regime you know, has passed an act called the Heroes and Martyrs Protection Act, which prevents any criticism of uh, the Maoist Communist Party or the current Communist Party? 嗯，我在西方来已经有呃七年了，在卢旺已经七年了。我在柏林那个地方，就是说，嗯，和其他那个作家还有交流。我知道这个世界总是，嗯，一个新闻掩盖另外一个新闻，一个罪恶，新的罪恶出来了，呃，就会掩盖旧的一种罪恶。I've been on exile in the West for seven years. Seven years. In the West, I always have a lot of uh, uh, contact with other writers. And in the West, I noticed that when you watch news, it's always like one news comes up, so important, and then it's got buried by something else. So it's almost like in China now, it's one evil crime comes up and then buries another one. Yes, when you 然后兴起，然后他们那个抓到一些西方的记者，然后当当着大家的面，然后割头。特别是有一次，我看到一个日本的记者，一个日日本的记者割头，然后日本记者也日本政府也没有什么办法。经历了很多，你觉得这些惨剧，当你接触的时候，你觉得这个是的确是太惨了。这这个时候，你就突然就是意识到。这个世界也不是一个点，就是说，你要让这个西方人，让让整个世界记住这个天安门，我们经历的大屠杀，这个的确是非常困难的。就是说，这个按照一个人的遗忘、遗忘的一个本性。嗯、um, ，For example, with the rising of ISIS, I used to watch with horror see the uh, execution of journalists. For example, one day I saw this Japanese. Journalists was beheaded, uh, and then it was so tragic. And then that makes me think that uh, there's so many horrible things happening, and then one thing happens, and people forget it because we are more forgetful. So if we want the world, we want the Chinese people to remember the Tiananmen massacre, it's almost an impossible task because just uh, one thing comes another, and people are, tend to be more forgetful. More forgetful. 但是对于我我来说，就是我自己就是说印象印象
最深的就是改变我的人生的，就是那个呃天安门大屠杀，然后我写了一个大屠杀，然后而然后因此坐牢，改变了我的人生。But for myself, it's very important to example the Tiananmen massacre because I wrote a poem and I end up in jail for four years. That totally changed my life. 对，但当一个难民，他经历了很多灾难。他他，然后当另外一个人在新的罪恶，然后他他也在哭诉的时候，这个时候你就感觉这个世界就是说很茫然，但是到最后，你要想到就是说，呃，一个德国人，一个叙利亚人，一个其他人，他们所了解他们的历史，就是一个普通人所了解他们的历史，比那个一个中国人，一个中国的作家或者是一个。中国的就是异异分子，了解的要多得多。这个了解的那个真相，了解的那个切身体，比你要深刻的多。呃、uh, ，for when I'm in Germany, I meet a lot of refugees and uh, uh, some of the people that came from Syria, or I meet some Germans who have experienced all kind of uh, the horrors of history. But when you talk with them, you will know that uh, these people they know more. About their own history and their past than some Chinese distance or some writers of of China. So, so, just say, I, so much, and live so much, and age, 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 I just can only, to a certain extent, only record, just the Tiananmen massacre, or about Chinese history, you only choose this. At this age, that my only, the only task. I think I can do is to record the history, whether be a uh, Tiananmen massacre. Or anything. 就是其他那些也也因为我，呃，在中国生活了大半辈子，就是这个。Since I lived most of my life in China, so that's the only thing I can do to record this historical fact. I want to uh, ask you about the power of the powerless in um, in China. Um, we all know Havel's essay, uh, and he, you know he said that people have within themselves the power to, uh, to overcome their powerlessness by living in truth. That's what he said. Um, and I want you to try, if you can, to apply that to China. Um, there's a good question from the audience. In fact, there okay, I didn't know you got them. I didn't even know that they were done. Two that are relevant. All right. Well, I'll do that. Let me ask my question first, and then I'll then I'll read these. I didn't know that they were coming in, but thank you, thank you. I wasn't sure that actually it was it was happening that we were going to be getting these questions. But uh, in an essay that Liu Xiaobo wrote in 2006 called "To Change a Regime by Changing Society." He talked about the erosion of the pillars of totalitarianism in China, the economic, the political, the ideological pillars. We're eroding. Um, and uh, since then, you know, China has centralized power, and they're creating a surveillance state using facial recognition technology and so forth. Um, and is it you know, is it possible that the Havel vision can apply to China? You said elsewhere once that the China, you know, that the uh, the true spirit of the Chinese will outlast the rule of the totalitarian the totalitarian regime. Do you believe that? And how do you see that possibly happening? 现在中国的情况，呃，和这个，呃，刘晓波起草《零八宪章》的时候，又有很大的不一样。呃，比如说现在就是习近平他已经准备要回到一个毛时代，呃，然后他就是取消了这个，呃，这个国家主席的这种一个任期，然后在在在这个同一年的话。他在在北京那个郊外，郊外就是一下子清除了，在一个大冬天，把那个就是二十多万人赶上那个街头，这个就人家鬼鬼
the situation in China now is vastly different from the one that when Liu Xiaobo drafted the Bureau 8 uh, Charter. And uh, since Xi Jinping has taken power, he um, has extended the term li limits, has completely returned China to the, that of the Cultural Revolution. And also, as you have all heard, that uh, last year, when China tried to uh, drive 200,000 uh, migrant workers out of their homes in the winter, in the dead winter. When this happened at this critical moment, I think those homeless migrants, I consider them as all uh, 200,000 uh, migrant workers. They are dissidents of China. Two of the questions, by the way, really apply to that, so I'm going to, I'm going to, let, I'm going to ask a third question, which is a little bit different, um, but related to the power of the powerless. And it's, which of Havel's works has influenced you the most? An essay, a play, his, his dissident activities, his political actions, or something else? So tell us what you think about Havel, and, and this may also be something that Lucia might want to comment on. The the Harvard's uh, works had a great influence over me because when I, uh, in uh, 1994, when I first came out of prison, a friend uh, brought me a book of collected works of Harvard and it was published in Hong Kong. Translate by Zhang Yunjin. 他我我我翻开了哈维尔的影片文章，他就是讲他是一个孩子的时候，他在那个田野里面，那那天就是阳光也很好，那个鸟儿也在歌唱，突然看到那个远处，呃，就是冒起了一股黑烟，这个黑
出来就是就是在这一本文集里出来，是在那个李老伯呃李老伯第三次入狱的前夕，他就是在这个成都来，然后他就把我的这个文集他就拿走了，拿走了，然后他的他当时打了个开了个玩笑，也就是说，哎，就说一个就是我喝着你的茶，然后读着这个哈沃哈维尔这个。呃，其中有一篇，有一篇的标题叫《无权者的权利》，他当时，那就是这个玩笑，这个玩笑开了大概就是一个多星期之后，他就他就不被抓了。I want to come back to the 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 Hubble's work that、uh, I mentioned, and、uh, I had the work and Liu Xiaobo took it uh, when uh, before he was jailed for the third time, so he took it from me. And then after he read the, the, the book, I mean the Hubble's collected works, he told me that、uh, one of the articles he read really impressed him. The, the name of the article is called The Power of the Powerless. And、uh, he said he was reading the article while sipping hot tea. And、uh, even though、uh, after he made the remarks, and then he was put in jail. I like h 有一点就是说，哈维尔，因为有一个作家叫昆德米兰昆德拉，在中国，在中国非常有影响。我们呃，我们当时还是很喜欢他的作品。他跟那个米兰昆德拉有一场著名的争论。There was another writer that uh that uh, really impressed us, uh, Milan Kundera, and then uh, uh I remember there was used to be a debate between Hubble and uh, Milan Kundera. And then it, uh, uh, Kundera is also very popular among Chinese readers. 嗯，当时那个哈维尔他就发起了一些请愿，然后包括就是后来西西宪章这个，然后昆德拉就说就就是就认为这些东西，呃，就是没有什么用，他他就觉得就是说，与其这样的话，不如去谈下钱，呃，多给他们一些官。Uh, the, during the debate, I remember that、uh, Hubble tried to launch all kinds of petitions, including the July 7th charter, the charter. But、uh, Kundera doesn't didn't believe that、uh, it was useful. He believed that、uh, maybe it was more useful to provide some material support for ordinary people. 当时那个哈维尔有一个观点，对，对我来说影响很大。他就是觉得，呃，在监狱里面的政治犯，就说，呃，其实是最担心被人遗忘，特别是担心呃被自己为之奋斗的那个事业所遗忘。当他某一天在某一个地方听到一个陌生的人，或者一个陌生人听到提到他的名字，他心里面会感到莫大的安。Uh, one of the the, the passages that influenced me most, uh, one of the passages written by Hubble that influenced me the most, was related to prisoners. He said, when a、uh, when a prisoner uh, um, when a person is in jail, the the things that fear the most is about being forgotten by the outside world, especially being forgotten by the closet that you、uh, you are in. He said, one day when you hear a stranger、uh, mention your name, it Uh, it becomes the greatest comfort, something to the fact. 对，作为一个坐牢牢的作家，我觉得哈维尔他说的非常对。As a person who has been in jail for many years, I really feel that word. I think is absolutely right. We've heard that from so many, so many people who come out of、uh, totalitarian systems. We hear that all the time. This is one question which actually is related. To something that Liu Xiaobo wrote, and I, let me read the question, and I want to make a comment about something that Liu Xiaobo wrote. With a fifth of the world's population and economic, political, and technological might, what's the potential of China exporting illiberalism、uh, to other countries, especially those that lie along the, the Belt and Road Initiative, you know, the trillion-dollar infrastructure? Project, which is a geopolitical project, Liu Xiaobo、um, in 2006 wrote a remarkable essay 
in which he warned when everybody believed that China would liberalize by becoming economically developed and all the internet and so forth. He warned that if China rose as a dictatorship, you'd have the same problem with Germany, with Germany rising as a dictatorship under Hitler and the Soviet Union rising as a dictatorship under Stalin. And they mentioned the Meiji emperors in Japan and the danger of this. And Liu Xiaobo said that it would, be a, it would not only be a catastrophe, catastrophe for China, but it would be a catastrophe, catastrophe for the spread of liberal democracy in the world. And, and that's really what the question is all about. And maybe he could comment on that.就是西方最强的就是十九个国家加上中国就是举行了一次会议就是那个时候就是说只有那个默克尔在给这个在跟习近平谈这个刘晓波的刘晓波的西方治病的这个问题其他那个就是任何政府都是想到的中国就是只有这个巨大的市场在在这个时候我就感觉到我听到这个消息我感觉到非常的绝望我就知道就是那个市场的力量有多么的大这个就是那个市场根本市场中国的市场的话根本就不可能促进什么民主只能就是
，黄芪在已经处于这个生命的危危危险，然后他的八十多岁的老母亲，在为他到处举牌，到处呼吁，我我我当时就是感觉到非常的震惊，就是一个人已经是到达一个快死的一个程度，他在这个程度，如果说没有在。也不会放大就是。呃、uh, ，Then I I got news that another human rights activist Fang Xi he, he uh helped launch Tianwa. It's a uh, another uh, uh a website that uh uh and he was in jail and he was on the verge of uh dying and then the Chinese government wouldn't release him. His mother was uh rallying support and that that really shocked me because when a person who was dying in the Chinese government. Not willing to release her. And they murdered Li Guang in February. I think they, he was a, a lawyer for the House Church Movement, and he was murdered in uh, in February. Um, do you have a word to say about what's happening today in Xinjiang um, and putting a million Uyghurs into concentration camps? Yeah. This is like launching another cultural revolution in Xinjiang. It's the brainwashing movement. It's not new. Deng Xiaoping didn't invent it. Mao Zedong invented it himself. It's very interesting. Um, we have time for one more question, and let me let me uh, let me pose it. Uh, when you uh, received the uh, Penn Award, I think it was in 2007, uh, they didn't allow you to come and receive the award, but you had a written acceptance statement. And in that acceptance statement, you said that you had four teachers. And one of them was hunger. One of them was having no residential permit. One of them was homelessness. And the fourth was prison. Maybe you could just say a word about that, your teachers, and how it influenced your, your work. This is my life. 两岁的时候，我遭遇了呃三年大饥荒，嗯，就是六个那年差点被饿死，嗯，但是我还是幸运，因为那年呃就是那三年，中国饿死了三千到四千万人，我无论如何还是还是幸存下来，然后后来那个到了文革，就是要到处查户口。然后我妈妈就在，就是老师就是，呃，就是带着我那个就是，有一段时间就是一个一个地方只能够住过一个月两个月，这叫居无定所，就是，呃，没了，对。The article I wrote about my four teachers that actually summarized my life. First, hunger. I was born in 1958. 嗯。一八年。I was born in 1958, the year of the Great Leap Forward, and China had a uh, uh, mouse policy that led to a massive starvation. At the age of two, I almost died of uh, malnutrition, and uh, but fortunately, I survived. But at that year, about 30 or 40 million Chinese died of starvation. So uh, I was fortunate enough. And then during the Cultural Revolution, my father and mother, my father was uh, branded a cultural counter-revolutionary and they had a divorce. So my mother and four of her children, including me, we moved from city to city because in Chinese cities, they required the city permits to live. We never had any permits. So we lived from place to place. Sometimes we stayed in one uh, city for a couple of months and then we had to move again. So we never had a permanent residence. Then the third teacher is the white people. If you go to a small city to a small city, if you don't have a permit, that's a very bad thing. So he can always send the police to the house and send you to the house. So uh, 
in those days, if you don't, you didn't have a residential permit. It was a very hard life because uh, um, you could live at a place, and then the uh, um, the part of the militia could uh, come into your house and raid your house and kick you out. Especially if you uh, live in a small city, you want to move to a major city. That happened most frequently. 就是最后一个老师就是监狱，监狱让我从一个诗人变成了一个一个建筑师。And uh, the the life in prison, meaning I was prison、uh, in prison after 1989 for writing the poem Massacre. And before the, my imprisonment, I was a poet. And、uh, after I came out of prison, I became a、uh, um, A witness to history, and I began to report to other people's lives.、Um, Andy, do you want to reflect on what you've heard? Oh, I was going to ask a couple of questions. <laughs> <laughs> But,、uh, well, I mean, I think、uh, I'll reflect instead. You know, I think Larry Wu has.、Uh, he mentioned he's told us about the other side of China. Not the side that we hear so much about, and I think I don't. I, I would have been curious to ask whether he feels that that other side of China is more real or more authentic than the side of China that we hear so much about. But I, we don't want to have more questions. But I, well, he, we can ask that. He, I mean, he said that. He said、yeah. it's, it's,、uh, he's telling the. The the real China that is、yeah. hiding behind this rhetoric about、right. economic. And if I'm allowed to ask a question, I'll also ask whether he feels that there's that that other side of China is uniquely Chinese, or whether he feels that that's humanity as it happens to be found in the places that he looked. But、um, any whatever answer he may have to my question, I think that what he's producing is beautiful art. Very insightful about the human condition. So、uh, his his art is uh, uh, really uh, successful and important. Who said the Chinese? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try to hear you. Go ahead. This is all the bigger and to the other Chinese. One aspect is your story of the is the other aspect of the the upper society. This upper society. One question is this upper society. 社会是代表一个更真实的中国吗？还是就是中国的一方面，两方面都可以说是真实。而且另外一个问题是说，这个你的故事能够反映出来的人，可以说是所有人，全球的人都是一样，都是这样。或者你的意思是说，这个是中国才会有的这种人，但是你。无论如何回答我的问题的话，我说你的艺术是非常、非常好，表现一个就是说对于人类的一个重要的一个深入的了解。应该应该是帮我们翻译的。应该是啊。哈哈哈哈哈。对对。这大部分我我刚刚也说了英语，所以没有必要他来复读一下。<笑>这个，这个也，我八十年代做诗人的那个时候，呃，我认为那个自己的生活差不多就是一个全部。那个时候也对那个西方的现代派啊，然后那个金斯伯格有一些模仿。那个时候认为自己了解整个世界，结果那个。有一天你被投进了监狱，你才你才发觉这个世界不是这样。我进监狱的第一幕，呃，我认为那个时候我还是一个比较有名的诗人。In the 1980s, I was a poet. I thought the life I lived reflected the 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 life of other、uh, ordinary Chinese. And I was very enamored of Western、uh, poets. And I, do, I start to take strong interest in contemporary、uh, poems. And I wrote a lot, and I thought I knew、uh, more about the West than anybody else. And then when I was put in jail, I suddenly realized the life is not like that. And then, 
，然后呃，我就呃进到那个监狱，他那个是一个二楼一个楼板，然后就突然就是有几个犯人就扑了上来，扑了上来就是把我的呃衣裳裤子一下子打了几光。从来我从来就没有像这么当众被打个精光的，然后就是有一个他们就把我摁在地上，然后就开始踢头，哗哗哗踢了，踢了之后，然后他们就让我把这个屁股给撅起来，我就我我也没办法，我就只有撅起来，然后就用一根筷子在我的屁眼里面搅，看看里面藏没藏东西，这个这个时候。你就你就觉得我完全就像一个被拔光的妓女，站在那个三三月份还是比较冷，站在那个就是等待他们每呃每一样做好，做好。但是这是一个监，中国监狱的后来我了解，这个收身这是一个神态。我真的就是不了解，在以前坐牢之前。我不理解，中国社会原来就是这样。嗯。So before I was in jail, I was quite a well-known poet. But then when they put me in jail, the first day they took me to a two-story building, and then once I entered jail, and then several people suddenly pounced on me, and then they ripped my clothes off, and tried to search to see if I, I had anything hidden in the clothes. After I was completely naked. They had me uh, crawl over, and then they stick chopsticks into my my anus and try to see if I if I had anything hidden in there. And when this happened, I suddenly realized that when I was naked, I was so humiliated. And then I just realized that, uh, uh, that life was not really what I had expected. It was a completely different life. 对，就是每每一个人，包括你自己。呃、okay. uh, ，And then I realized that、uh, this whole uh what the the body search, what I can, uh what I went through was very common, especially among prisoners. 每一个人在中国社会，哪怕你呃就是感觉良好，你一天，你都有可能待遇就是这样，就是都可能成为那个呃中国底层当中的一员。But in China, you might feel very good one day, and suddenly the next day you could all end up in jail and go through the same process. You could become a member of the bottom run of society. So uh, nobody's secure, and I don't think that's the case in the West. Okay. Um, I want to first of all thank Andy. Um, and also proposing that last question. Obviously, once again, I want to let Lucia know that uh, how she graces us this evening and how grateful we are to have her with us. But I want to just say one uh, very presumptuous thing in, uh, in conclusion. I mean, I'm not a, any kind of a literary critic, but I think as I might have, uh, you know, betrayed a certain enthusiasm that I developed from reading these uh, stories, by um, Liao Yu Wu. And, uh, you know, in uh, 2015, another person who conducted interviews got the Nobel Prize for Literature, Svetlana Alexievich from Belarus. Remarkable books based upon interviews with the kind of people that Liao Yu Wu has interviewed and somehow uh, really brought it all to life. Tremendous meaning. And he has done that. He has done that in a way that I have not read anybody who's done it as well. And so, you know, Pavel Lavader de Duchambault for the Nobel Peace Prize, you know, let me presumptuously conclude this meeting by nominating Yao Yu Wu for the Nobel Prize for Literature. Thank you.